The Cubs beat the Cardinals yesterday by the score of 5-1, to one, their first win of three runs or more in over a month. We're going to talk about that. We're going to get into a Cubs former prospect who delivered 13 strikeouts for the Washington Nationals yesterday. Sure would like him back in the Cubs rotation. Is Kyle Hendricks going to appear back in the rotation as well? What about Shota Imanaga? How good has he been? That and more on the Cubs baseball channel. Make sure to like and subscribe. Jump in the comment section. Let us know how you're feeling about our favorite team coming off a big one yesterday and looking to make it two in a row today. Here is your invitation to our show. What's up, everybody? Happy Sunday. My name is Anthony Pasquale with the Cubs Baseball Channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, being part of our show today. Got a lot to get into and can't wait to get it started. First of all, if you want to find me on social media, I'm on Twitter at Ant underscore Pasquale3. We got a lot to get into today, but I want to start with one thing. Two days ago was our guy Mick's birthday. So everybody didn't see enough in the comment sections yesterday. So guys, jump in there. Wish Mick a happy birthday um, not on the show today. He's with his family, but happy birthday to Mick, guy who got this channel off the ground. A big reason uh, why all of us are connected, talking Cubs every day. So go wish Mick a happy birthday. And secondly, I want to start off with this. Happy Father's Day, everyone. I know a lot of you, um, like myself, got into baseball because of your dad. So shout out to all the dads out there with us or not with us. Um, this day's for you, and hopefully the Cubs can get a win for you guys today. But um, I think baseball is often portrayed so much as a father, son, father, daughter type of bond sport. Um, and as much as like we talked about on Mother's Day, there's so many great moms that bring us to baseball and, and you know, take us to practice or uh, um, teach us how to throw. A lot of us have those stories with our dads as well. And today's a day to celebrate that. So um, first, I want to ask you guys, what's your favorite baseball movie? Because I know those always get played on Father's Day. Uh, I used to always watch Field of Dreams with my dad when I was super little, and that's always a good baseball one. So what's your guys' favorite baseball movie, um, and how do you guys like to uh, to watch baseball movies on Father's Day? But let's get going into the show a little bit. The Cubs beat the Cardinals yesterday by the score of 5-1. to one. And listen, I don't use the term beat lightly. The Cubs finally beat a team. They didn't survive. They didn't almost blow it. They didn't squeak by. They beat a team. And boy, it's been a long time. It's been almost a month since that's happened. The first win by more than three runs since May 15th. Exactly a month. First win by more than three runs since May 15th. That one was in Atlanta, 7-1. to Shota Imanaga pitched that day as well, I believe. He was awesome yesterday. We're going to get into that in just a little bit. But the Cubs beat the Cardinals. Five to one, the final score, a huge win for them, hoping to get back on track and get back into this division battle. But let's talk about the man himself. You see Shota right there. Mike Imanaga II works as well. That's another thing he goes by. Uh, apparently, he doesn't like to put Shota on his Starbucks and Dunkin' orders because that's too hard for them to announce when he goes to pick it up. So he's been putting Mike. So uh, the Cubs clubhouse staff put Mike Imanaga on his locker and that's what his teammates are calling him now. So Mike or Shota, whatever you want to call him, he's going to be the rookie of the year in the national league. He has been sensational for the Cubs and that continued just the same yesterday, seven innings of one run baseball. He struck out six and on that final strikeout, he gave a couple of fist bumps and a leg kick fired up the Wrigley crowd. Um, there's really not enough you can say about show Tim Naga. He started 13 games so far this season and the Cubs are 11 and two when he starts. Just think of how bad this season would look if Shota Imanaga was not in the picture. He has been a lifesaver for this Cubs team, and he's a big reason why they're still uh, within striking distance in the wild card in the, in the division. If it if we did not have Shota Imanaga, signs would be pointing to a full fire sale at the trade deadline. But we do have Shota Imanaga, so hopefully we're not selling at the deadline in just a little over a month. It was kind of the same game. The Cubs slow offense. They were only up two to one, only with runs scored in the fourth inning. Um, and again, runs scored on ground outs. Um, 
before that in the Tampa Bay series, the Cubs were scoring runs on bunts, so they weren't really slugging that much after they briefly got into a hot period of slug about a week or so ago. Um, but then Ian Happ came through in the bottom of the seventh with a three-run homer to stretch the lead from two to one to five to one, which the Cubs put the finishing touches on and won five to one. Tyson Miller took over after Shota Emanaga gave you two shutout innings. Um, not credited with the save because it was a um, four-run deficit. But I want to ask you guys this. Um, he's got a 1.82 ERA so far. Is Tyson Miller the guy that you want to give the ball to to close games? Hector Neris, he's been pretty good. He's got 10 saves, but he, he's given the other team base runner after base runner after base runner when he pitches, which makes it scary. That's why he's earned the nickname, nickname Heart Attack Hector. But Tyson Miller's quietly put together a really strong season since coming over from the Mariners in that trade. Um, he's simply been great. His last 11 games, he's pitching to the tune of a, a 0.69 ERA, only one earned run in his last um, bunch of outings. He's been fantastic. So I wonder if you guys think maybe he should be the guy the Cubs give the ball to in the ninth, slot Hector back into that eighth inning role where he has excelled in. That's Certainly something to think about as the Cubs move forward, but Hap with a thunderous blow. He's been awesome against the division, but specifically the Cardinals broke him out of his slump a few weeks ago, and now it seems to be breaking him out of his mini slump here again. Um, so great swing for me and Hap from the right side of the plate, which has been rare for him to have some power on that right side, but it was a huge hit that the Cubs needed, um, and they get the win yesterday 5-1. to one. Little bit injury news here. Jordan Wicks officially to the IL with a right oblique strain. Um, Craig Council said it's looking like he's going to miss some time, which is obvious now that he's on the IL. The corresponding move, Keegan Thompson coming back from Iowa. Now, here's the thing with Ben Brown and Jordan Wicks both on the injured list now, and Hayden Wesneski unstretched out, like he's back to a one inning type of role, which he's been in for almost a month now. And the guy you bring up is a bullpen guy, Keegan Thompson. So you have to wonder what the Cubs plan is at fifth starter. And uh, it's looking like Kyle Hendricks is going to go back to the rotation. Um, despite his struggles this season, he's actually put together a really strong last 11 or so innings scoreless um, on display were those four shutout against the Cardinals earlier in the series. So I think he'll slot back into the rotation. What are your guys thoughts on this? I think we know his full-time starting days are probably behind him, but it seems he's figured something out over his last couple outings. And if you put him in a situation where you get through the lineup once, maybe, maybe start getting through the lineup twice and pull him, you know, after four shutout innings or something like that, you got to feel good about that from Kyle Hendricks. Now, if he goes out there and gives up another eight run in three innings, I don't know how much longer you can do this, but he's proven to be a little bit better already. And he's starting to get back on track. Now, I, part of me thinks, like, why mess with what's working? If he's coming out of the bullpen and low leverage and pitching well, why don't you let him keep doing that and figure out who else could start? But with Ben Brown and Jordan Wicks on the injured list, Kate Horton, the Cubs' top prospect, also injured in the minor leagues, and then Hayden Wesneski, who started some games already, um, is now one of your most reliable one-inning guys. And I think... Drew Smiley or Kyle Hendricks is not a choice that any of you guys would be wanting to make. You'd probably lean Hendricks. Maybe some of you would lean Smiley, but he's been okay out of the bullpen too. I think it kind of has to be Kyle Hendricks right now. And as much as that scares me, I hope uh, this recent stretch is indicative of things to come for Kyle. Um, I, we've, we've been talking all year about how we hope it isn't the end of the road for him, but I know a lot of you guys in the comment section think it is. So let me know your thoughts here. He'll probably start one of the games next week against the Giants would be my best guess. But um, I'm sure that'll make a lot of you hold your breath when the Cubs play that game, uh, whenever it is that he starts. Hopefully he doesn't get into too many bad situations and the Cubs can win that game. But a guy that they certainly would like to have in that fifth starter is DJ Hurst. He was sensational yesterday for the Washington Nationals, a guy that the Cubs traded to acquire Jamer Candelario last year at the trade deadline. Uh, he wasn't their highest rated prospect as a pitcher, but a pretty good pitcher at that. And he obviously has some swing and miss stuff with the Cubs rotation hasn't had much of, especially as of late. Um, but DJ hers went out there for the Washington Nationals against the Miami Marlins yesterday and absolutely shoved. He pitched six innings, which means he got 18 outs. 
13 were strikeouts. He was sensational, only allowed one hit, a truly great outing from DJ Herz and one of his first appearances, only his third appearance in the major leagues. Now it, the Cubs could certainly use him in their rotation. Certainly a guy that they'd like to plug in right now with a couple of injuries. Um, I'm not going to knock Jed on trying to make a trade at last year's deadline. Um, we've knocked the Quas one for Nelson Velasquez, but I'm not going to knock it. Jamer Candelario came over, played pretty good, left in free agency. That's the risk you take when you when you go out and make a trade for a rental piece. Um, but it just stings to know that DJ Hers has this type of potential to strike out 10 guys a night and is going to be a Washington national for the foreseeable future. A guy you certainly um, probably miss in your system and would like to have right about now. Um, I, I just want to go back to this. There's a few names I'm thinking, but I don't, I don't know if there's anywhere the Cubs can really go aside from Hendricks, at least right now. Obviously they could make a trade. They could restretch out Hayden Wesneski. They could also go with an opener type of move. They could go Smiley and Hendricks and go left, right, or right, left to start the game. I'm not sure, but it seems like Hendricks is the most logical option, especially after pitching four and a third just the other day. You could get him on five days rest starting then um, and go from there. Hopefully, uh, Brown and Wicks are not sidelined too long. Both guys factor in to be huge uh, pieces of this team, whether it be in the rotation or out of the bullpen as the season progresses. But I will say Imanaga, Steele, um, and Tyone have been really strong so far this season. Obviously, Assad as well. And we just mentioned Tyone. He's on the mound today against the Cardinals. Uh, Miles Michaelis pitching for St. Louis. He's 4-6 and six on the year with a 4.85 ERA on the season. Um, a guy that has been a little bit uh, prominent to the long ball and a guy the Cubs have faced an awful lot over the years. The Cubs have a number of guys who are hitting very well against him. Um, one, two, three, four guys hitting over 300. Uh, Dansby Swanson, Nico Horner, Ian Happ, and Michael Bush have some really strong numbers against him. Um, I will say Jan Gomes has gotten his fair share of hits. Christopher Morell has hit against him 12 times and is hitting 250. Um Dansby Swanson and Patrick Wisdom both have homers against him, and Cody Bellinger has driven in three runs against Michaelis. On the other side, these Cardinals have had pretty good experience with Jamison Tyone as well. Arenado is hitting over 500 against him. Goldschmidt, uh, over 300. And some other guys, Carpenter, Burleson, Gorman, have all faced him quite a bit of time. So it's going to be two pitchers that both teams are pretty familiar with. Um, as they play on Father's Day today at Wrigley Field at 120. So that's what we have on deck for today. Um, again, a happy Father's Day to all of you tuning in who are fathers. Um, if not, go wish your father a happy Father's Day and, uh, and, and wish Mick a happy birthday too. He deserves it. He, and I hope he enjoys the rest of his weekend. I think he'll be back with me tomorrow to recap today's game and get going into the week against the Giants. But again, my name is Anthony Pasquale. Thank you guys so much for joining us on the Cubs Baseball Channel. You guys are awesome. Jump in that comment section. Let us know how you're feeling about Kyle Hendricks. Let us know your favorite baseball movie. Let us know what you think the Cubs are going to do at fifth starter. And uh, let us know if you think the Cubs should have held on to DJ Hers. I know hindsight's 2020, but man, 13 strikeouts, that's a guy you'd love to have. But for now, just like, subscribe, um, jump in that comment section like we just said, ring the bell, and sing Go Cubs Go, because the Cubs won a game yesterday, and hopefully today they can make it two in a row. Go Cubs.